welcome to episode 15 of Pins and Needles, my knitting, sewing, crafty podcast. Um, my name is Zoe. You can find me on Ravelry as BFG and on Instagram as Pins and Needles UK. We do also have a Ravelry group, so if you're on Ravelry, search for us in the groups tab um, and it's Pins and Needles podcast. Um, got a nice few members going in there, so do come along and join us for a chat. Um, you can also email me. My email address is highpinsandneedles at gmail.com. Um, I will put timestamps and details of everything in the drop down box below. So if you want any more details of anything or if you want to skip the chatty section at the start, do check down there and you can jump to any section you like. Um, I've had quite a few new subscribers recently. So hello. Hello, new guys. And welcome back. To any of the regular lot. Um, thank you for spending some time with me. I've got quite a lot, looking at my show notes, I've got quite a lot to talk about today so um, I hope you've got some spare time and, um, and a beverage. I'm actually not drinking tea today, I don't know if you can see, let me see, yeah, um, I'm drinking hot squash. It's absolutely raw and um, I should start properly. I live in South Wales in the UK um, we're literally right on the coast and the last couple of days it's just been so cold my feet have started hurting and um, because I've got a lot to talk about today I didn't want to talk with tea because the tea goes cold and then it's yucky so hot squash it is and then if it goes cold it's still squash so yeah right um chatty introductiony bit right so it's been a really fun two weeks um last weekend some of my friends that i met through ravelry um, were kind enough to travel all the way from one side of the country to wales to come and see me and another friend of ours hannah who lives in newport so hello to melissa and farah and hannah um, they came up on the friday and uh, they really got a taste of Wales. The weather was like the end of days. I think it was a named storm. You know when weather's bad in the UK because they give it a name and it was storm something or other and it, it rained sideways. I've never experienced rain anywhere except in Wales where it rains up. And that means it's raining so hard that when the rain hits the pavement, it bounces back up. So it rains up your trousers. It was that bad. Anyway, so Friday, um, Farah and Melissa just came over to mine and we made fajitas and chatted and drank wine and ate olives. Um, and then on Saturday, we braved the weather and we took the train into Cardiff city centre. Um, Hannah lives in a different city, so she came to join us in Cardiff as well. Um, and Cardiff's a lovely city. It's quite small. I think it's about 400,000 people so it's not enormous and um, they've got the Christmas lights up at the moment so that was really nice um, and as well as all the normal shops that you get anywhere um, we've got several really lovely little Victorian arcades so they sort of little covered walkways between the main streets um, and they are packed with little independent shops because you can go to Marks and Spencers and next anywhere in the UK so it's I wanted them to see you know the things that make Cardiff different and special so we had a really lovely day found lots of little bits and bobs shops and Melissa and I bought things for our kids for Christmas um, and then Hannah jumped on TripAdvisor and found us a wonderful place for lunch so we all ate chicken burgers until we were groaning and freaked out the waiter by knitting in public <laughs> It's so normal for me to be out with a group of people knitting because my knit night meets in a pub. So, and they're used to us and we're used to them. So it's no big deal. So we were all sat there with our needles and yarn and the waiter came up and was like, are you knitting? And the temptation to just say, no, nope. <laughs> just to see what he'd do. So that was quite the fun. Um, and they had the craft market as well. So lots of little sort of wooden sheds with different independent makers in there. And um, there was actually a massive international rugby match. The Right in the heart of Cardiff city centre on the river is the Millennium Stadium. 
It used to be Cardiff Arms Park, but they knocked it down and built a super fancy new stadium. Um, and Wales was playing Japan. I didn't realise Japan was a rugby playing nation, not going to lie. But anyway, match day in Cardiff is fantastic. It's crazy busy. It's just thousands upon thousands of people having a fantastic time. And it's dead for the two hours that the match is on and then everybody streams out. And Wales won, which was fantastic. But even if Wales doesn't win... The atmosphere with the fans is just wonderful. It's not like football in the UK. Football in the UK can be quite violent and aggressive amongst the fans, but rugby's altogether different. And there were groups of people and they all dress up. So they've got their Welsh, you know, rugby shirts on. And then everyone wears silly hats. So you get these big sort of foam daffodils that go all around here and just your face in the middle. Um, and there's dragon hats and leek hats and... There are lots of sort of stations on the streets where you can get your face painted. So they have stencils and you get like a dragon on your cheek or the three feathers and people bring their kids. So by the time we were looking to head home, the match had kicked out and the street was just heaving. It was a lovely atmosphere and it was dark and all the Christmas lights were twinkling. So um, it was busy and it meant that queuing for the train took a little longer than usual to get home. But I was really pleased that Melissa and Farah got to see Cardiff on a match day. So that was really special. I, I really enjoyed that. And then that was the Saturday. And then on the Sunday, um, everyone just came over to the house and we took Jim the dog. I have a lovely black Labrador called Jim. And um, we took Jim the dog for a walk on the beach. And um, I live on Barry Island. So lots of you in the UK will have heard of Gavin and Stacey, the TV show, and it's filmed on Barry Island. So we had a dog walk and I took the girls to see Nessa's Slots, which is the um, little penny arcade that one of the characters works in in the TV show. And um, Farah bought some tea towels. <laughs> it's a terribly British thing to do, buying tea towels as souvenirs. Um, and then we headed back home and um, my husband Dave is a fantastic cook and he very kindly made an enormous roast chicken lunch. And uh, so we ate until we were groaning and then did some more knitting. And um, poor old Melissa, she um, she's originally from California. She's been living in this country for a few years. Um, but my house is cold and Wales is cold. So, <laughs> so I had the heating on and this behind me I've got an uh, imitation gas fire so I lit that and we had the heating on and my youngest son Max has a big blanket that looks like it's made out of teddy bears like teddy bear furry fabric so I piled that on her and I think she thawed out enough so that she could bend her fingers to knit so that was a really lovely weekend it was such a treat to see them because literally they are right the other side of the country um, and Hannah only lives about an hour away, but with working and kids, it's just, it's surprisingly difficult to catch up with people. And um, I love the fact that I met these people on the internet and now we're real life friends. So I was quite sad to see them go. And then on Monday, when it was sort of back to real life, I'm, I'm a, bit, a bit glum really. Anyway, so that was the big thing that I've done since we last spoke. The other thing I wanted to talk about was my make-along. I mentioned this in the last episode. Starting on January the 1st, I'm going to be hosting a make-along. Um, I'll start a couple of threads in the Ravelry group in the next few weeks. And the idea is that you do something new. It can be a new technique, a new pattern, new fabric, or a whole new craft. I don't mind. Um, and a lot of us at the moment are focused on Christmas crafting for other people. So I thought we'll have a new along in January and it's going to be called the New Fangled Make Along. Um, and I thought I'd remind you of it now so that if any of you want to put materials or patterns or tools on your Christmas lists so that you're ready to go for the 1st of January, you've got a month to get yourselves together and sort out patterns or techniques, whatever it is you want to do. 
So I will start two threads in the Ravelry group as in a couple of weeks. Um, one will be a chatter thread, so chatter away like mad in there, and one will be a dedicated finished objects thread. Um, I would ask that there's no chat in that thread, and when it comes to posting finished objects, um, one post per object, please. Um, that way, when I come to drawing prizes, it, it, it'll be easier for me to sort it. Um, in terms of rules, if you're making teeny tiny things, if you're going to be making little ornaments or tiny baby hats or something, just use your own judgment. Maybe group tiny things, maybe like two, two baby hats or things like that. Um, just so it's a bit fair if you've got people tackling a whole new adult size project or something like that. So have a think about what you would like to do if you would like to take part. Um, you've got a month to get yourselves sorted. Um, I have ordered a sewing related prize and I will hunt through my stash for a knitting related prize. Um, and if any of you out there are makers or designers or anything like that and would like to contribute a prize to the Make Along, I would be very grateful for any donations. Um, chuck me a PM on Ravelry or send me an email, something like that. Right. This is another podcast where I've got so much stuff I can't fit it on my coffee table. So brace yourselves. Right, pins, my sewing section. I have finally got over my shift dress disaster and have picked it back up again. Um, for any new viewers, um, if you check out episode 11, which I put up at the beginning of October, um, I had a disastrous sleeve incident um, and I've been sulking for nearly two months now, but um, I was determined to sort it out. So last night um, I poured myself a very large glass of white wine and went back to it. So the pattern is New Look K6145 and I am going for View B, this one, just by here. Um, I bought the dress, oh no, I've just dropped all the things I was going to show you. Um, I, um, I had completely finished the dress and now I've completely ripped it apart. So for anyone that's new, this is the fabric. Um, it's a knit Ponty Roma fabric that I got off eBay, um, cheap as chips. It's absolutely my colours. It's lovely navy with cream and sort of like a bronzy highlight to it. So that's that. Um, you have to bear with me just a moment while I pick up all the things that slid onto the floor. Oh my goodness. A disaster. I'm back. I hope you didn't get an extreme close up while I was doing that. <laughs> right. I think I identified the problem. When I was digging out all of the pattern pieces um, again, I was reading them and they've got on the pattern, they've got some garment measurements, but not a complete set. Um, and it doesn't tell you how much ease there is. And this is the front pattern tissue piece. And it gives you, let's see if you can see it, finished garment measurements just by here. And then underneath, which I hadn't spotted the first time, total ease above body measurement is approximately five inches. Five inches. Five inches is enormous. That's like... I mean, it's just huge. Normal wearing ease in a garment would be one and a half to two inches. So this is, is would be classed in my mind as deliberately oversized. So I wish I'd seen that the first time. I think that explains a lot of my problems. So I had originally made a size 16, top and bottom, and the top was way too big and the bottom was about right. So what I did was I always trace my pattern pieces off the original so that if you want to alter things, you haven't spoiled the first one. So to give you an idea, 
here is my oh here is my front pattern piece now the actual edge is the original size that I cut so this outside edge all the way around is the size 16 and you can see the pencil markings here and that will be the size 14 so you can see how much I mean that's that's probably half an inch so by the time you've got half an inch all the way round, you're talking two inches less in the bodice. Um, the neck will be a little bit lower, but that's okay. Um, and it will be a bit shorter as well. Um, I had to remark the bust darts as well. Is that showing up? Yeah, so you can see, just see the faint outline of the original dart marks there. Um, so yes, as you can see, there will be quite Use the rustling quite a considerable difference in the finished garment um, I took the decision to unpick the whole original garment because I love the fabric and I don't I know I'm gonna have to make a bit of a bodge job of it recutting it but I thought if I didn't want to just take the side seams in and do it that way I thought no take it right back to the pieces and um, I've got some more fabric and um, I can't recut the front and back but I can recut the sleeves, um, and if I need to recut the facings, that, that won't be a problem either. So, so that's underway. Um, I also showed you last time that I had bought an invisible zip foot, so that will hopefully make my back zip much tidier. It was quite horribly ripply the last time. And I found a really nice um, uh, tutorial on YouTube I'll put a link to it down below. It's by the Thrifty Stitcher um, and it's a really detailed, up close, explanatory video on installing a zip. So I'm going to follow that. Um, would you guys be interested in a thread in the group um, that includes the tutorials that I use? I've been asked before what sewing books I use and although I do have some, I tend to go straight to YouTube because you can stop it and start it and you get more explanation. So um, if you're interested, let me know. Let me know in the comments or in Ravelry and um, I can start um, a knitting techniques video thread and a sewing technique video thread as well. Um, and then it will always be quick for you lot to refer back to if you want a particular tutorial that I've used or have mentioned on the podcast. Right, so that was the return of the shift dress. Um, the next thing I wanted to mention, I discussed last episode, I'm taking part in the Little Red Dress project. This is um, a challenge by Renata of Running and Style Blog um, and loads of people are taking part. And the idea is you must make a red dress for the by the... 19th of December. Um, I decided to make a dress for my daughter and I finally found a pattern. Um, I discussed it in more detail in the last episode um, about my choices and things. So I have found this pattern. It's New Look 6320 and they have a tweens. I hate the name, the word tweens, but lots of children's sewing patterns go up to about eight years old and although she's nearly the height of a woman, it's child proportions. So this I thought would be quite a good pattern. So the challenge has to be a shift or sheath dress. This has some nice variations on it. Um, there are options with these top two that you could sort of mix and match fabrics and, and really have fun with it. Jocelyn, my daughter, wanted a plain one. So I think, I don't know if she wants the collar. So we're either gonna do this one or that one but she quite likes the idea of the scarf as well. So I bought that from Butterfly Fabrics in Cardiff, which is my local fabric shop. Um, and I have ordered some fabric from MinervaCrafts.com online. Um, and it's a lovely, it says on the back, you can make it out of lots of different things. Corduroy, cotton, linen, peak poplin, sateen, stretch wovens, tweed wool, denim, double knit. So a huge range of options. So I thought it'd be a really handy pattern. I can make her summer things and I can make her winter things out of this. So we went for a cotton poplin 
I've never sewn with poplin before. It's cotton, so I'm sure it'll be fine. And she found um, a marble effect, sort of swirly red and cream um, cotton poplin. Two metres of that. I need, to, I forgot to order a zip. I need a nine inch decorative zip. So I think it's an exposed zip, which I haven't done before. I'm sure it'll be fine. It will be fine. So that's that. And um, when Melissa uh, came to see me on the weekend, she bought me a whole bag full of fabulous little things, which I'll show you mostly later. But um, she bought me a load of this. Now this is quilting cotton. She used to do quilting, not so much anymore. So was just passing along some of the things she no longer wanted. Um, and I love this. Um, it's just purple birdies. <laughs> There's absolutely loads of it. So I thought I would make um, the toile for Jocelyn's dress out of this. Um, and hopefully it will be wearable enough. Um, it should be, I feel like I'm cursing myself saying this, but it should be a fairly easy pattern. Um, yeah. So I thought if I make a toile in this, um, and then I can make any adjustments and use the red poplin for the final version. Um, and it also means that I can keep you guys up to date on how I'm doing without having to spoil the big reveal, which won't be until later on in December. So thank you, Melissa, for this. And I'm going to make Jocelyn a nice dress out of that. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you well, I'm sure if, I mean, I'm sure you're all on social media, but there have been so many gorgeous Christmas things appearing and I'm aching for it to be Christmas yet, but I can't because Jocelyn's birthday is the 1st of December and there is no Christmas in my house until at least the 7th of December. So Jocelyn gets a proper go at her birthday, but there's Christmas everywhere else. And it's, I love Christmas so much. And what I'm particularly desperate for at the moment is Christmas project bags. And I follow so many makers on Instagram who are teasing me with their Christmas project bags. So last year, I made four drawstring Christmas bags, one each for the children and one for my husband, so that when they open their Christmas stockings, um, they can put all of their goodies in these drawstring bags and there's no arguments about whose wind up teeth are whose and I've got lots of fabric left over I've got Christmas trees I've got Nordic stars I've got mittens love mittens and I've got stars and I've got stags Christmas stags I'm sorry, my phone keeps glitching. I hope that isn't too frustrating for you. And I've got some red cotton. It's all cotton, quilting cotton. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and make, using these, I'm gonna try and make myself a Christmas project bag. I've made lots of project bags for myself, but I've always made them drawstring. And I want a zippy one, a zippy wedge project bag and I want it to be squishy. I've got a fabulous project bag from Elsenwood Craft. Hi, Emma. Um, and it's just, it's squishy. <laughs> and it stands up um, really nicely. So um, I've got cottons to choose from. I've got some fleece that I thought might be good for the squishy thing. I think most people use wadding, but I don't have any. So I want to get cracking on that as well. Um, Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is, I mean, if you're in the States, Black Friday is a massive thing. Um, I hope you're all spending loads of money. Um, in the UK, it's a bit more recent. Um, but I did want to mention that lots of fabric websites, independent pattern designers, you know, independent dyers and things are having um, Black Friday deals, a lot of which are going on over this weekend. Today is Saturday the 26th, so hopefully I can get this out this afternoon. And if you weren't aware, if you've been under a rock somewhere, um, J 
jump on Instagram, find your favourite sellers, look at your wish list and go and treat yourself to something. Um, it's worth mentioning, if you have a look at thefoldline.com, um, they do have an article on there that gives you a list. There's over 35 um, designers and websites and independent makers listed on there um, just to give you a, you know, a, a hit list of where to go to get your good deals. Um, I did make a few notes. Um, there is Fabrics Galore, Girl Charlie, Fabric Godmother, Village Haberdashery, Tilly and the Buttons, Sew Over It, Minerva Crafts, Colette, Closet Case Files, loads, absolutely loads. So some of them it's free shipping, some of them it's 10% off, things like that. So do go and have a look. Um, I went to minervacrafts.com. I've not shopped with them before, but they were wonderful. Um, and I bought a couple of patterns for sort of two pounds each. Fabric for Jocelyn's dress, um, a wedge bag pattern, um, so I can make that bag and some really lovely things. So absolutely go and have a look, treat yourself to something nice and do it all on the internet so you don't have to um, get in a stand up fight with anyone in a shop. In the spirit of acquisitions and buying things, um, the other thing, well, Melissa bought me lots of things, but one thing she bought me was embroidery stabiliser, which I didn't know was a thing. I think it's for machine embroidery and it's sort of like a, a white, it's like a white sheet. I can't take the lid off, you'll just have to believe me. Oh, there you are, look, you can see the bottom. Um, and it's tear away fabric so you can embroider through it and then rip it out. I don't do embroidery, but I have seen um, on various blog articles that if you are sewing uh, quite a sheer fabric or a slippery fabric, it can be quite difficult to manage under your machine foot um, and lots of people suggest tissue paper, sewing, um, sandwiching tissue paper to the fabric and sewing that way and then removing the tissue paper when you're finished. And I thought, hmm, I can use it for that. So when I get to the stage of um, making something from silk or chiffon, I'm not there yet, that will be fabulously handy. Um, I was in Butterfly Fabrics for the, the new look pattern for Jocelyn. And as I've mentioned before, they are um, moving, in the process of moving at the moment. So they've got lots of wonderful fabric on sale. And I treated myself to some cotton jersey that I made my Tilly and the Buttons Agnes out of. Showed you that last episode. And when I was buying that fabric, I spotted some different cotton jersey and I was torn between which one to buy. And in the end, I went for the teal hearts that I showed you. But when I went back to buy Jocelyn's pattern, they have a big wire basket with sort of offcuts and sale items in and they had the other fabric. Look, it's Scotty Dogs. I love it. So it's a chocolate brown um, with Scotty dogs with pink and white and red spots. Um, brown is definitely my colour. Pink and red not so much, but I don't care because I love it. Um, it is cotton jersey, 92% cotton, 8% elastine. It's 1.2 metres long, 1.6 metres wide, and it cost me 8 95 So I'm hoping that I can get another Agnes out of this one. I might try the version that has the ruched neckline um, and again possibly an extra one for Jocelyn out of this um, as well. So that's my other acquisition. Um, on to needles, my knitting bit. Now I actually have a finished object. Yeah see the squash has gone cold now. I have finished my husband's Christmas socks. I've mentioned them on previous, I'm still getting this the wrong way around, there we go. On previous episodes, I won't bore you with it, it's Blueberry Waffles by Sandy Turner and the details are on my project page on Ravelry if you're interested. Contrast toes because I ran out of yarn. So I'm pleased to have those done and out of the way um, and uh, I was very bored of knitting them basically. Um, oh, have I forgotten my other?
Yes, I have. Right, I'm going to pause this and I'll be back in one second. I'm back. Sorry. Um, I also have a half-finished object. I needed another sock. I don't know if you remember, it's part of some yarn that I ordered at the same time as I ordered Dave's sock yarn. I treated myself to a ball of opal. I'd never used opal before, and it was supposed to be socks for my dad for next year, but I liked the yarn too much. <laughs> so so um, when the girls were coming down the other weekend, I needed a simple sock project. And I knitted a sock. It's a plain vanilla sock. One by one twisted rib, which is my standard, 70 stitches, and it's completely finished. But it's not perfect. The yarn, sorry, more pattern avalanches. Um, the yarn is Opal Shaft Pattern 7 8903 Silver Distal. Now, I decided to do a fish lips kiss heel, which is not my standard heel. I like a heel flap and gusset. Um, the pattern for the fish lips kiss heel is super detailed, brilliantly written, very clear and easy to understand. And it has you make yourself a cardboard foot. So this is my foot template. Yes, I also have huge feet. I'm six foot two nearly, so I have feet to match. And the idea is that when you're knitting the foot, you poke this template in and you knit to this point and then you start the toe. Well, I was taking this sock out and about, so I didn't want to cart a massive cardboard foot around with me. So I measured from the heel up to that line and just took a tape measure with me instead. And some, it, it hasn't worked the same way. My foot, I do a normal wedge toe for decreases. So if I fold my sock in half, so this is the heel and then down to the toe, and I put the template over the top of it. My toe, I don't know if you'll be able to see. My toe decreases start here, which if I move it along to the cup off it is there. So I'm about half an inch too short for the foot. So I'm gonna to have to rip the toe out and do it again, which is a bit irritating. And something else I find Doing the fishlets kiss heel seems to shorten the leg. I knit to seven inches for the leg and then normally heel flap and gusset, nice long length. There's something about the fishlets kiss heel pattern that, that uses more of the leg for the heel. Does that make sense? I, d I don't know if that makes sense. So these feel a little bit short in the leg. So I will rip out the toe, knit a bit more of the foot, do the toe again, try them back on, and with a bit of luck, it will just be that because the foot's too short, it's pulling the whole sock down my leg, so hopefully that will fix it. But anyway, I absolutely love the yarn, beautiful colours, greys and heathery purples and things, so I'm really enjoying that, um, and I've made a reasonable start on the next one. I'm that far through. Um, I'm knitting these on 2.25s, and magic looping it um, and yeah and that's that I really enjoyed it I knit the first sock in about three days it, you know when you just can't put something down it was it was one of those hmm. next thing I wanted to show you oh sorry let's knock the camera um, I am knitting um, some fingerless gloves for Conrad, my eldest. And I'm using a pattern by Clara Parks called the Main Morning Mitts. It's from her book, The Book of Yarn, Knitter's Book of Yarn. The picture's a bit dark, but there's the picture. And they're just simple um, ribbed fingerless mitts. There goes another pattern piece, I'm so sorry. I'm keeping them in my Mrs. Brown's bags and I have finished one. The yarn is um, Fibre Spates Scrumptious Aran 405 Slate. There's the yarn. This yarn is beautiful. I love Scrumptious. It is 45% silk 
and 55% merino so it is super squashy and it has this beautiful shine and um, if anybody out there has trouble with wool being a bit itchy anything with silken is fantastic um, I use this for my May apple shawl that I knit the yellow one that was fingering this is Aaron anyway so that's the yarn and here is the finished glove now Conrad is 12 but he's very tall um, and because he's oh I think that was inside out yes there we are so I followed the pattern which is for an adult but I used four millimeter needles and the pattern calls for 4.5 so I wanted to make it a fraction smaller and I also made the thumb quite a bit smaller um, because you don't want baggy fingerless mitts um, which is fine except it's too small so <laughs> I mean it's a super quick knit so it's no big deal and I think I have enough yarn but I'm going to have to rip it out and start again um, the trouble is Jocelyn has got my 4.5 millimeter double pointed needles she's also a knitter and she's knitting herself some fingerless mitts she does about three rows every six weeks so what I might do is um, slip her fingerless glove onto some waste yarn or onto some other DPNs and then I can get cracking on those. So yes, I enjoyed knitting those, they're, um, they're nice. And as I said, it is getting quite cold. Conrad leaves at quarter past seven in the morning to catch the bus for school. So it is dark and wet and windy and horrible. So that was that. Um, my other thing I've been working on Jenny, I hope you're watching. I have been knitting a sausage dog. The pattern is Bangers the Sausage Dog by Amanda Berry. That's what it's supposed to look like. Um, it's a paid for pattern on Ravelry. And I'm knitting this for Jenny's little boy, Sammy, who is obsessed with a sausage dog storybook he's got. I talk about it in more detail in the last episode. And this is how far I've got. Hello. <laughs> I love him. So I'm knitting this out of Hayfield Bonus DK. It's 100% acrylic. Um, Sammy is six, five, six. So it needed to be washable. Um, and I'm following the pattern exactly as it's written. The only slight difference is I added eyelashes because the sausage dog in the story is a girl sausage dog and has eyelashes. So there we go. Um, it's a very clear pattern, very nicely written. I feel like he should be a shoulder companion. Um, and all the pieces are knit flat and seamed. I did consider knitting them in the round, um, but to be honest, I mean, I haven't sewn the legs on yet, but that's the leg. They're so small it would almost be as much fiddly work to knit them in the round as to just do it flat so so there we go so i've got to sew his four legs on i've got a tail somewhere as well yeah little tail i haven't stuffed that yet and that goes on the back um and then the dog in the story has a striped beanie hat and a scarf which wraps around his body so I had a look in my stash and I've got various colours of DK yarn for doing this, but it would be a bit, there would be a lot of ends to weave in if I had to use different yarns. So when Hannah came over last weekend, she very kindly bought me this. This is some indie dyed yarn. She, I don't know who it's by, I'm afraid. I've got 22 grams to knit a beanie hat and a scarf. I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough, but I will give it a go. Um, if I run out, I can just knit using the DK yarn I've got. But hopefully, I mean, it's a very small hat. How do you work out how to size a hat for a sausage dog? I'm unsure. Anyway, so that is Bangers the Sausage Dog. I'm rather pleased with him. He's got these incredible googly eyes. And uh, I mean, at the moment, it's more of a draft excluder. But um, we'll get there, won't we, Bangers? Yeah. So I'd like to get him finished this week because um, it's the 1st of December on Thursday and I know the post gets really busy. So I really want to make sure that that gets to Jenny in plenty of time um, so that Sammy gets his sausage dog for Christmas. Um, 
on to more acquisitions. Um, this first acquisition came literally the day after I podcasted the last time, so I'm sorry it's taken so long to show on the podcast. Um, one of the people I follow on Instagram and follows me back and watches the podcast is the very lovely Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Um, she is Kelly Lay one five one two on Instagram. And she sent me a message saying, would I be interested in doing a mini skein swap? I've never done that before. So I said, yes. So I got mine sent off and um, I received hers. The hers were beautifully wrapped in this lovely orange tissue paper. And the yarn she sent me are all from a, the same dyer called Little French Meadow. You can find her on Instagram and on Etsy. She has a shop there as well. And... Kelly sent me these. Look. And isn't it genius how she's wound them? I was winding mine round my arm and my elbow, sort of round and round like this. So I ended up with this little oh, T Rex arm. It was a nightmare. But she's been much more sensible. So this one is Little French Meadow Purple Rain. This one is April Showers. I love that. Turquoises and slate grey. This one is Summer Pudding. This one might be my favourite. Um, that is Ant Spoiling the Picnic, which is a lovely name. And then the next five are all Harry Potter themed. I love Harry Potter. We took the kids to see um, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. That was a brilliant film. Quite long, but really good. So this one is Alohomora. That is Forks the Phoenix. I love that. Really nice. Bertie Bot's Every Flavour Beans. I like the pops of orange in that one. And the flashes of bright pink. Room of Requirement. Dark and mysterious. And that one is Dobby's Socks. So, all of these I absolutely love. Thank you so much, Kelly. Um, it was really kind of you and I'm so glad you suggested we do a... So I'm knitting a scrappy sock yarn blanket. Um, I'm doing mitered squares in blocks of nine and each block is going to be a different indie dyer. So um, that's what these are going to be for. So I'm going to have a little French meadow slash Kelly blanket square. So I was really pleased with those. It's been very difficult not to cast on with them because I wanted to show you lot first, but I managed to restrain myself. Um, next up, um, my friend Jenny went on the Geeky Puffin Knit Palooza knitting retreat um, a couple of weekends ago and um, the Geeky Puffins have a fantastic podcast you can find them on YouTube um, and the lady that does that also does various designs and things so they had a sort of a swap table and Jenny very kindly brought me back another ball of opal it's the um, the little prince De decliner prince um, and it is colorway 7765. Um, the sock that I'm currently knitting with Opal is the first time I've ever used the yarn and I absolutely love it. So I don't feel guilty about stealing that first sock yarn for myself. <laughs> so these will definitely be socks for my dad for Christmas next year because I always start um, my man's socks in January because they take so long. So thank you very much to Jenny for that. Um, and then, again, the lovely Melissa, she bought me some yarn. Now, this is a dyer I hadn't heard of before. It is the Ladybug Fibre Company, and she's on Etsy. There's her label. And this is Winter Sunsets. It's the February 2016 Self Striping Sock Club. And it's Superwash Merino, Cashmere and Nylon Sock Yarn, 400 yards. So I haven't knit any self-striping socks for ages, so I'm really looking forward to this. And then it came with a matching mini, and the mini is in the colourway Stormy, and that's just a merino nylon sock yarn. So that's a perfect match. And um, thank you for those, Melissa, and I will, those are definitely going to be for me. And last, but by no means least, Hannah, brought us all, everyone that came for the weekend, had bought us all a Christmas present. Although she swears blind it's not a Christmas present, but it 
Topia Christmas present. So first of all, this skein of gorgeousness. Look, look at the sparkles in that. This is by the very lovely Mothy and the Squid. And um, the colorway is a new star and it's 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon and 5% stellina. Now, you'll have to excuse the skein looking a bit ragged. It did come perfectly wound, but I got very excited and untwisted it. <laughs> and I'm not so good at tidying them up when I put them back. So it's gold stellina. Look at that. I have no idea how this is going to knit up. I don't know what it's going to be, but I love it. Thank you, Hannah. Um, and as well as that, she bought me one of these. Um, it's a little finger row counter, super handy. I'm always losing either my catcher catcher row counter or the pen I'm using to make tally marks. So something I can actually attach to myself is genius. So some of those. And then some fantastic labels. I don't know where she found them. So Hannah, if you're watching, please could you leave a comment down below to tell me where you found these because I'm sure other people will be interested. And it's a little pack of cards that you can attach to knitted gifts. So this one says, I made this, so yes, you do have to pretend to like it. And then there's, even if you don't like this, please don't sell it on eBay. This took forever to make, like literally. And um, it's just loads. Super awesome handmade gift enclosed, you're welcome. Uh, oh, and my personal favourite. If you don't like this, can I have it back? <laughs> so those were so much fun. So I'd love to know where they came from because I'm sure lots of people will be interested. Um, so yes, thank you very much to Hannah and Melissa. It was just lovely. So many nice things. Um, and it came wrapped up in a in gold wrapping paper with bits of ribbon on it. And look, it's Christmas tree ribbon. And I've wound it up and I'm going to keep it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's Christmas tree ribbon, so I'm keeping it. So there we are. That is the end of my acquisitions and indeed the end of the podcast. I know there have been a few glitches and I've dropped everything and forgotten things and paused and restarted. So I'm so sorry. This has been a bit of a, a bit of a shambles. <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me. Um, I'm still getting used to the new setup. So that's everything I've got to show you this week. Um, if you enjoyed the podcast, please give me a thumbs up, click subscribe, and then you'll get lots of updates. Um, come and find us in the Ravelry group. Um, follow me on Instagram. Um, check down below for details of anything I've discussed. Um, and I will be back in two weeks time. I hope you have lots of time for crafting and making and that you, uh, you have a really nice time. I will see you soon. Bye.